Welcome, Welcome to Between <laughs> Shelf and Screen. That was not planned, and I'm Ryan. I'm Alex. And today, we are doing something new. That will be discussing a book that does not have an adaptation. But we're talking about the adaptation, but there's no adaptation. No, we're talking about an adaptation that should be an adaptation. An adaptation we are creating. Yep. An adaptation that should be an adaptation, is that what you said? Shouldn't. I meant to say shouldn't. What? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be talking about why this shouldn't be A book be that made. should have we an adaptation. We should debate on this. Why don't we think of this? This is oh, a okay. better idea. I'll, I'll, so I'll, you I'll should the, debate. I'll be the naysayer. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to convince you yes. that okay, it should actually, be an adaptation. I, I like this. I like okay, this. I'm really glad that we did not prepare at all for this. So, all right, so this even adds the more uh, just kind of... Chaotic. Yeah, yeah. energy um, that we're going to be bringing today. Yes. So strap in. We... So t- tell me an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even going to explain anything about... <laughs> no, okay. I'll start with... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> wrong for the audience we are talking about Piranesi which we discussed the book last week um, we will be going into spoilers I cannot tell you exactly when so I'm just going to put it right here right mm-hmm. now if you haven't read the book what are you doing get, with your life get, get out of mean, here get out of here <laughs> <laughs> Um, If you don't want to read the book, but you still want to watch this episode and know what's going on, just listen to last week's episode. Oh, no, yeah. That's (laughs) probably... And then come back to this and then say, yeah. Watch every single one of our video while you sleep. Because we're going to reference every single one, every single book. Got to crank up those views. (laughs) Watch it while you sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Have a playlist created that cycles through. Your dreams would be strange. <laughs> and it will involve The Walking Dead. Yeah. And Anyways. The Last of Us and Avatar and Star Wars. God, you're just throwing all the $12 words, our $12 words, which yeah. is just things that we talk about all the More time. More so buzzwords. It's our buzzwords. buzzwords yeah. So first, I want to talk about this setting and like what I think that a movie would like incorporate how what it would take from the book and how it would do it so like with the majority of the setting being like in the house i assume gosh, everything would probably be green screen because it just like the halls would go on forever like that's how i imagine it just feeling so yeah just infinite and so I imagine that would be like green screen and then like the props that they would have are the statues and just like pristine marble. Like I imagine this being basically like sterile. It's so like white and somehow kept up besides of like few locations that are like uh, trashed from the waters or whatever it is. So like I imagine just this pristine and like I feel like it'd be cool tone lighting because that's a little bit more like mysterious it doesn't exactly like like it wouldn't be so like almost twilighty where it's so blue that it you get drawn to it like you can point it out basically yeah but it'd be like blue enough where it's just a little bit more like harsh in the air and you can tell that it's not like as comforting like the the house i feel like shouldn't be comforting to the audience, which is like where it would be off-putting to seeing like him kind of praising it and feel like him being so, um, I guess, just involved in this house and it being his only home. And like he gives off very comforting vibes, but the actual halls are like just so sharp and harsh that the audience is like immediately just off put, you know, I feel like that would be a good way to kind of introduce it. And you contrast it with him just being super positive and just loving life. Yeah. And I imagine him wearing like, you know, earthy tones, I think would be a fun contrast because there is no earth. Like everything is just these halls. Yeah. He gets water and clouds and that's it. Like, yeah. So 
I think that would be fun if he's like wearing greens and browns and all that. I don't think it really ever talked about his clothes besides them being like worn out, which obviously yeah. that would like make zero sense. colors. And that'd be like an interesting contrast to like of his clothes being so trash, but then the rest of the house just being so pristine. Yeah. Like all together, he's just a contrast to everything. Um, even the other himself, Piranesi, is yeah just completely opposite. When I imagine it, I like to imagine a lot of wide shots where you see Piranesi small down here, and then just huge statues, large pillars, and yeah, just like the and birds flying through. Like I'd like to, I'd that like them to cool. capture like uh, just the isolation. Mm -hmm. sort of loneliness just showing that he's all alone and like how small he is compared to all this around him yeah that would be cool if they had like some zoom out because like i feel like it couldn't be too wide like it couldn't actually be a wide shot because of the halls being i imagine narrower because there's so many i mean not like a normal hall like it'd be way bigger than that because the room yeah. itself's big but still it's very enclosed um, but like if it just like kind of zoomed out to show like, you know, all the different statues that kind of relate to each other in each hall, they kind of have the same sort of vibe, especially like it'd be creepy in the one where they're all like fighting and he gets stuck down there. Um, or I think like when he, was it when he fell, um, from the floor yeah. and he fell into like the room of like. No, it was when he went, um, like, thousands of kilometers away. And he had to go to the room that he could see the stars at. And that had, like, no windows. And it was all the, like, fighting uh, statues. Yeah. Imagine, like, it just, like, zooming out from, like, where yeah. he is resting. Oh, my God, that'd be, that'd be cool. You know, this um, is... I wanted to say something about this. Like, uh, you reminded me of it when you talked about, like, just marble, pristine... So this is going to be very niche. I bet you've never heard of this, but it's a, it's a video game called Control. Have you ever heard of it? Mm -mm. So in the game, it's really cool because it's basically like what you described, like very large marble spaces where it's just very pristine, sleek, shiny. Mm -hmm. And like that is the whole vibe of the game. It's just government, well, in that one's government building, marble, and just reflective surfaces. Mm -hmm. And you're just walking around exploring and like uncovering a mystery mm -hmm. so to speak but it's like it's really like it's a really cool game by the way i recommend it but yeah. that's like kind of the kind of the way i envisioned piranesi's world or the house yeah, to be. definitely and it is like mysterious yeah. you want your audience to be intrigued exactly and to know that something's off from the beginning but like not know anything further than that like, I, they have to do something. They have to do it in the environment because you're not going to get anything from Piranesi besides yeah. just, like, him not knowing the world. Like, that's... He's explaining things like everything is normal. Like, his tone's not going to seem anything out of the ordinary besides just, like, bro, how do you live like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you're going in without knowing any of the plot, you're just going to think, oh, okay, it's a fantasy. This is just how the world goes. And, like, accept it. You're not going to know, like... Okay, I need to be questioning things. I need to be um, yeah. taking in the environment, understanding, you know. And I, I'm sure people could still pick it up, but I think it would be, like, amazing if this did turn into an adaptation, like, them to start that way and have the the atmosphere itself is going to be its own character, just like the house was in the book, I feel like. Or they like Hill House. Mm -hmm. They need to do something. They need to, like... <sighs> They need to focus on cinematography and color theory and, like, all that, I feel like. Because this book yeah. itself is admiring art. They need to do the same in the movie or TV show. And actually, what what do you think that it should be? A movie or a TV show? It would be kind of a long movie, but I'd like to see a movie. I think, it, I think okay. it's small enough to be a movie. That's what I was going to yeah. say. I and was that, hoping... Like, I was going to... And, you know, I, I always say, like, miniseries is perfect. Mm -hmm. But I think Piranesi would be a little bit boring for a miniseries. Yeah. But also, I wanted to say this, too. Since it's written in journal, journal format, um, 
do you think this uh, would require like a voiceover of the actor? Or do you think, like reading the journals, or do you think it would, or do you think you could do that with scenes, rather? I feel like kind of like what um, All Quiet on the Western Front did. Like it really didn't have any narration, even though that was most of the book. Mm -hmm. But it got everything out due to like... Seeing it. See, yeah, exactly. And I feel like you could do that It'd be tough you'd have to you'd have to take out some scenes definitely yeah i i mean what do you do you think a voiceover would be better voiceovers are like so off-putting it, i feel like yeah in movies it's unless they're done right it's just so it feels lazy yes yeah I'm usually not a fan. And it feels early 2000s. Because I feel like that was a trend. Yeah. Wasn't that an I Am, the I Am Legend movie? Didn't he voice over part of it? No. A few scenes? Mm. Are you sure? I feel like I'm there positive. was a few scenes where he... No. There's only the end where okay. um, it gets voiced over. Okay. I thought there was some in the middle. In the beginning. I don't know. Oh, no. You're thinking of when he's doing the radio bo broadcast. Um... Okay. I am Robert Neville. I am in this place. <laughs> if there's anybody out there, yeah. But, I mean, what scenes would they have to take out if there wasn't any voice acting? None of the, like, hunting um, or gathering scenes. Yeah, you could do little blips of them. But, you know, there's just, like... I feel like they could get some out by him just talking to the birds. But he kind yeah. of, like, describes... A lot of his journal entry is just him literally describing what he did. Yeah. Yeah, no, honestly. It's just Susanna Clark writing the story through his Yeah, journals. he's literally yeah. just documenting. He's like, okay, so I did this because yeah, he's true. a scientist. Yeah. It's not so much his like uh, theories. Mm -hmm. well, it kind of is, but... Uh, at he, a certain part, yes, but I feel like that they could like have him be so angry that he's just like yelling to the birds or yeah like just erupting out because like that's reasonable too yeah um that seems kind of out of place for piranesi though yeah but that scene was kind of that was the only part in the book that was like because he just like started writing like he just started cursing out of nowhere and he was so <laughs> angry <laughs> when he found out or when he was reading the like old journal pages yeah. and it's like it kind of makes sense because it was still done in like a innocent way and I, I feel like that they they could do the same thing of him just acting it out or the other thing which i'm sure that it would be considered if this does become an adaptation is making it in like journal in, or um the journal entries kind of like the martian that it's just video recorded yeah and yeah. like they just introduce it where the other is like i need you to you know, record your updates on this so I can watch all the information or something like that. Yeah. Or like, you know, yeah, here's yeah, this. Yeah. So whenever I need you to record something, you have it. And then he just starts documenting like his own stuff. I don't know. But then also like that just adds in a lot of like explanation for why he doesn't question that technology. Yeah. I so think, like I, I, think, uh, I wouldn't want to see that, but I feel like that would be considered. I think you could get away with uh, not having a voice over I'm, I'm I would not want to see a voiceover, honestly. Yeah. That'd be too much. Yeah, the only, I mean, the only show that I've ever seen that kind of needed it was, like, Dexter. Mm, yeah, they did and do they, a good job with Dexter. Well, that's because Michael C. Hall's voice is just, <laughs> it's so good. It's such a good narration Is that voice. true? Yeah, I watched a Vietnam documentary with him doing it over. Really? So good, yeah. Because hmm. his, his voice is just, like, very, very nice. It's very yeah. good for narrating. I'd like, to, I'd like to hear him read books, for sure. Please add a few more adjectives to how you would describe his voice. Deep. Booming. Soothing. Elegant, <laughs> sexy. <laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Michael C. Hall, baby. Dexter did a pretty good job with it. But yeah. also, like, that's a more lighthearted Show. well <laughs> light-hearted show the scenes where it's voiceover like he had a, a comedic he, effect yes comedic yeah. effect so i mean sometimes. not even that he's meaning to but just like the way because he's 
just unemotional, which is just funny. Like, it doesn't yeah. even have to be purposeful, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to rewatch Dexter. Because, honestly, yeah. it didn't even phase me that there was a voiceover. Yeah. In that. Well, it is, like, early 2000s is when it started. Not early, but... You yeah, know, it was it, like within early. like within the 2010s range. I thought it was like 2006 when it started. Yeah, yeah I have I no guess, idea. I guess don't trust I, anything. I, that sounds right. I mean, I, I don't know. I didn't start watching it until like 2015. I didn't when it was on Netflix. That. Yeah. Um. Anyways, God, we always get off topic. That's why they watch us if they watch <laughs> us as a whole. <laughs> if they anyone's watch us out for there, specifically. Dexter content. My name's Alex Palowski. <laughs> if anyone's out there, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, God. it's a radio podcast. Ooh. What are you doing? Yeah, I just like to. This is a serious show. You're right. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna cut, and it's gonna cut to you with the hair in your face. Like, <laughs> what if we just. So, anyways, what we were talking about um, with the halls being super long and... <laughs> okay, I'm done. I can't Vestubules. I have, I have to be serious. Vestubule is such a British word, I feel like. Yeah. I'm, that's why I don't say it. I'm Vestubium. on strike against it. Yeah, honestly. It's actually kind of a sick word, though. I, I love that's it. A, that's a, that's a love cool it. word for hallway. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I love I love it that uh, I don't, I don't know if honestly I don't know if they say it in this book, but I love that British people have like they call things they're just like oh that was lovely, I like lovely I like that's that's such a nice You're charming allowed way to use it I know yeah but I, you know it just sound like it's you hear it a lot more in British slang you don't really yeah. hear it so much in the states but it's such like a nice like charming way to describe something you know what I mean a, a lovely way to describe a lovely something. way yeah yeah you can only do it with a British accent Except are for you Emma. okay with that. <laughs> Shut up. Dude, I'm okay. I'll, I'll hold back my opinions for the podcast, but oh my <laughs> god. Uh oh. My I'm, bad. I'm almost done with it. Okay, uh, anyways. Yeah, anyways. So, when I imagined the actor for Pierre Nessie, I was I couldn't get anybody else out of my brain but Daniel Radcliffe. That's a good one. Right? That's a good one. I do like that. I feel Is like he'd be British? perfect. That's that's. That is pretty good. Because That's like better I, than I, mine. I imagine like you know like when I imagine him in Harry Potter, which I've seen the movies, I can't remember them very well, but I remember him just being like a kid that's just like kind of happy go lucky, just rolling with it. Yeah. I'm like, he'd be a good Piranesi. That makes 100%. sense. I older adult him though. All I can think about about well, uh, anytime I think about Daniel Radcliffe. As an adult, I think of the Now You See Me 2 movie oh, yeah. when he was in that. <laughs> he's so, like... I mean, he's kind of still, like, a fun, lighthearted character because yeah. he makes a few jokes and he's like, anyways, let's get down to business. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's a good one, though. I haven't thought about him in a while. When I was I'm saying, really thinking of British actors. I'm not going to lie, yeah. I did not stick with the British theme because I'm lame and I just expect every actor to be able to do whatever accent I want them to. So, <laughs> yeah. listen, mine's not going to be accurate uh, accent-wise, but I don't care. When I was saying Piranesi, I was thinking... <sighs> I was thinking... God, Michael Sarah Is that his name? Yeah. I thought he would be kind of like awkward, but can play just like the happy guy that's just glad to be there. And yeah, he might be too awkward. He might have boxed himself in a little bit too much. Maybe I feel like he. I feel like he could. Yeah. But. Nah, Danny, I wasn't sold. Danny ex- boy. I wasn't sold exactly on Piranesi. I think Daniel Radcliffe makes sense. The other one that I was thinking. Which I'm partially. I think I just have beef with the the Willy Wonka. Um, trailer that came out because that was weird but oh, I think, timothy shalalalalame timothy shalalalame would actually do pretty a good. pretty good job in this role was well, like, it because you have a him crush in, on him <laughs> i mean no but it actually isn't based on that um in any sort of way i think seeing him in little people um like he just would be 
He would be good. No, I, I think, think I think so. that's another. But good one. he is a, a talented actor. Really no, he he, he rules. I I love all like all, all the roles he's been in. He's killed like mm-hmm. legitimately. I can't I can't even knock him. Yeah. Like, so like we love Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> But the Willy Wonka, I'm a little disappointed in that. Yeah. Maybe it was just I mean, marketing, but... Willy Wonka is just... They shouldn't have done another remake. That's it. Yeah, Actually, no, they need, it. They it's need not to just, him. They need to just stop doing remakes. Mm-hmm. It's not Timothy Chalamet. It's the it's, stupidity of It's the fact the that they keep remaking stuff. It's yeah. like, please don't We do didn't that. need to see this. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it. Don't need it yeah. in my life. And also... The original actor is so iconic that like it yeah. looks weird. Like he looks weird in that. Yeah, I, I don't dumb, get it. Dumb. Anyways, jumping to the other. Who were you thinking for the other? The other Did you I have was, any? So hold on. You don't have to stick with British. No, I know. I I, I don't think I have a British. <laughs> I, I'm gonna look up his name, and. I was. I had a hard time with the other. Because he's not, like, a villain. Like, okay, he is, but he's so awkward and bad at everything he does because he's just egotistical that he's not a typical villain, you know? Okay, actually, I don't know if this works specifically, but I was thinking of J.K. Simmons. J.K., what's he in? Um, hold on. So he was the voice actor of Omni-Man, which you wouldn't know that. Because you're a loser, this guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. okay. He he's very good at being like a, a very stern guy, and I just I don't know. It, it kind of came to mind, but I think he would be better, honestly, as the the cult leader professor. Okay, yeah. I, th- I think he'd be better for that. I could see that his and face then, too. That's who I imagine because he seems more confident than the other yeah. would be, or what I imagine. Um. Well, as, if that's who you're putting for Lawrence, I'll jump to my Lawrence. And I was thinking, um, you might not know him, but Peter uh, Capaldi. Peter he Capaldi. Was, oh, he was wait. in Doctor Who. He was the 12th Doctor. That sounds so familiar. I'm he's Scottish. He's, he's such a good actor. He's like, I feel like so underrated. That'd be really, really good. No, that I like that one. I was thinking, he, I feel like he could play either the other or Lawrence. Yeah. But I don't know if he's like awkward enough to be the other because the other didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. Period. And I feel like the person I picked was a little bit less confident or assured, um, or the person that I picked for the other. I think maybe fits a little bit more. But I think Peter uh, Capaldi could play either of them because he's Definitely. so good. And then... Um, Raphael? Raphael, Emily Blunt. Oh. Okay. Raphael didn't have a lot of time. More like technically... Yeah, I don't know why, but her. I just... I, you know, obviously I thought British. And then I also <laughs> thought... Um, she feel like... I could see her as a cop. Yeah. You know? I could see that. Yeah. I like that. She seems like a detective type. Yeah. She could definitely kill that role. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then John Krasinski is the other. John Krasinski? Yeah. He's too young. Wait, am I? No, well, like I said that because um, that's oh, Emily, Emily Blunt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. Because that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that didn't A Quiet Place, though? I know. I, I know. I love that. They're so good together. Um, it, yeah, like I was like, oh wow. I was watching that movie. I was like, oh wow, they work so good together. Like mm-hmm. they have chemistry. It's like, oh well, they're husband and wife. <laughs> they weren't even acting. <laughs> they weren't even acting. <laughs> um, for the other, I put Alan Rosenberg, who's in Shameless. He played the professor. Hold on. Um, professor Yoon. I don't know. He's like. Alan Rosenberg. Yeah. Alan with an L A N. Alan. A Lan. Wow, you're getting some niche actors in here. I've never, I don't remember seeing him. I, I was like, a clip popped up that like reminded me, and I was like, oh yeah, he would be good. Cause he, he's confident and I feel like could play an egotistical person, but he's like also very scared. Or like in the show, you know, 
specifically the one scene where like um god lip and him were like arguing and he lip was just like screaming at him and like you could tell that he was just like kind of backing off and he stood his ground somewhat but like definitely wasn't as headstrong as lip. like i feel like yeah so i feel first like, off lip that's a good actor i don't think he fits in this but right yeah, he he yeah. is so good. It's really really good. Talented as brick. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he wouldn't fit in that, but he is really good. I thought that he would play a good. Other, well, he's kind of old now, so like ten years ago, him. Yeah. They could just take him back because yeah. I think he's like seventy two now. Right. Yeah. So. I feel like J.K. Simmons has the has that down though for like the profit. Yeah. I think he could definitely do that. Yeah. And he could definitely get a British accent if he wanted. <laughs> he could pick one up. Yeah. No, but I, I love his voice. I'm just like, have you ever heard J.K. Simmons' voice? Yes, I have. It's like, iconic. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. I also, at least my list, I mean kind of yours, we were just like so big. Like I was doing whatever I wanted. I didn't care mm. that it didn't work. Like Alan, don't think it would actually work now because I don't even know if he's still acting. But like whatever. I think 10 years ago he would have been perfect for this. And I can yeah. say whatever I want because this is my list. Harrison Ford is the other. <laughs> <laughs> just starts spinning up. Oh my god. <laughs> Timothy uh, Chalamet is Raphael. <laughs> Natalie Portman is Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> Hayden Christensen. <laughs> We're just listing up Star Wars characters. <laughs> Adam Driver. <laughs> Adam Driver might. Ewan McGregor. A, he might not be a bad Piranesi. No, I, I was like, I said that, I was like, oh wait, that kind of works. <laughs> Because he's got the comedic beats. Have you ever seen him on SNL? Yes. I love Adam Driver. Same. Same. He's so funny, hate. dude. Yeah. He, he's one of those people that doesn't really try to be funny. He just mm-hmm. is. Yeah. I think I think he I think he could actually do a good job. Yeah. In any of the male characters, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he's technically old enough to play the other two, but screw it. I don't care. Dude, okay. I know they're supposed to be rich, old, white males. Actually, I don't know if they're both white. Was so, that the other not white? No, the other was white. I think they're all white. They're British. <laughs> that, that doesn't mean the same thing. <laughs> yes, it does. I thought that the other's name... No, he was what white. What was his name? Ketterly. Ketterly. I thought that... No, I swear he wasn't. No, I'm pretty sure he was. Shoot. I remember him I thought being he described was, as pale. Now that I'm... Oh, you know what? I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Maybe Dude. I'm thinking about. Anyways, I always I ever, okay. Here's I never said who I pictured Raphael. I think America Ferreira was in the Barbie movie. She was the the mom. I think she would do a good job as Raphael. And or I put Zoe Saldana. I don't know if that's how you say her name. Zoe Saldana. She was in Guardians of the Galaxy. She played, um, what's her name? Black-eyed woman. Um, she got sacrificed, and she ooh, was the daughter of... Okay, yeah, yeah, Daughter of Thanos. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't think of Thanos' name. Yeah, no, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. I think... I could see that. That definitely. Oh uh, yeah, she's I, so But I'm, I'm kind of. I, I like sticking like with my guns here, though. I, I really like Emily Blunt as <laughs> Raphael. It's just supplanted in my mind now. Like I can't. <laughs> I can't get it out. I'm like that works. You're just thinking about her, okay? I get it. She's just clouding your mind, and you're thinking about John Krasinski. Yeah. I get it. Okay, the two of them together. You know, you do you. <laughs> you just be in your own little world while I talk about Piranesi. Who is produ? Okay, wait. I want to start this without Michael just Bay. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you. Um, I want to ask you about Michael Bay. Mm. So perfect. Lots of explosions in this in this book. <laughs> <laughs> no, who do you actually think is producing 
or would produce? What would it be on? You know, I'm realizing I don't know too many directors. Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan. I mean, he could probably do it and do it well because that man is a genie. But, uh, no, nah, this wouldn't be a film that he'd want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I don't know. Of. I actually don't know anything he about likes, directors. He likes the horror way. films. Well, you, you know Mike Flanagan, right? I've talked about it many times. I know I do, but I well, give me an example. The Haunting of Hill House. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just didn't, I couldn't connect. He also writes. And, and he's, yeah. <laughs> him and Stephen King need to do a collab. Well, actually, they already did. They, he did Doctor Sleep. Oh. You ever seen that? No, but I think you told me about this. It's so good. Yeah. It's so so good. I want. I do want to read the book. Oh, I do that. too. Why? Why have okay, we? Okay, next. Yeah, no, wait. Why I have we? I thought we added that to the list. I We've think we did too, but one. we were just like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> and we also haven't done The Shining yet either, which yeah. I am. I have not seen The Shining ever. This is so perfect because, <laughs> yeah. like, I've I've seen I've seen and read it, but I just I'm so down for a reread because oh, so good. The audience is gonna start getting mad because one of us is like has read the book or yeah something anyways. well there's a lot of anyways yeah go on no there's a lot of what i mean there's, there's a, a lot, lot of, of there's, there's a lot, a lot of, ad, of movies. there's like a lot of book adaptations that are out there that are really popular that i like you you will already like just you shouldn't have read in your past you're right this should have been your first time reading that's what i did i've never read a book before this dude that's a good move <laughs> <laughs> You know what just popped into my mind as you were saying that? Who I don't think this fits, but this would be so fun to see adapt, um, adapted by Jordan Peele. Hmm. Like. Yeah. No, actually, that could I could. I think that because he has such a, like. Okay, I don't actually think it would work but imagine just like no, him I adding his touch into this story I, I don't think it would be as Perfect, accurate yeah. it, it would, would have odd. to be changed because of who he is but like that would just be so cool. like i feel like he'd make it more horror i mean not in the typical manner but the jordan peele yeah. manner and that would just be i would love to see that i think that'd be fun yeah but it's not really what this story is it's not a horror quentin tarantino <gasps> <laughs> I mean, that would be... He's no, got, it wouldn't work at all. <laughs> no. But, oh my gosh. I would like to see that, too. That'd be its own trip. <laughs> That'd be insane. It'd be, it'd be wild. <laughs> they just add in so many F-bombs. <laughs> <laughs> and feet. Margot Robbie I is I mean, he Raphael. was shoeless. <laughs> Margot Robbie is uh, Piranesi. <laughs> he just... Oh, my God. oh man, I the mean, directors. I'm, I'm realizing I don't like besides like Scorsese, yeah. Nolan. You know, like all the right. big ones. I don't really know many directors. I don't like know that. fantasy ones or like. Yeah. What What's a movie that's mm. kind of similar to or a show or anything mm. in like character wise? It's just kind of like weird, and you're going about. Ooh, wait, hold on. Oh God. Who's the guy that did? Oh my God, Wes Anderson. Oh, that's yeah. that would actually be perfect. Yeah, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson, it is. Yep, that would be so perfect. It's for, oh my God with the trend that one. Have you seen this stuff? People, like the trend. It became a trend. Be like pretend like you're in a Wes Anderson. Oh, and then make it super like aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Aesthetic. I love those. Yeah, that would be that'd be cool. I think that'd be perfect. Yeah, I think that this would seems be like good. up his alley because mm-hmm. he he usually likes to do like serious sort of comedies, mm-hmm. and like the aesthetic portion, like he'd kill it. Yeah, no, that that's a good one. Anyone that I'm trying to think. Oh of my god, one. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Ketterly, Willem Dafoe. I I considered I considered Willem Dafoe. I know I saw him because I I was like trying to remind myself of some big names. Mm-hmm. That were like older because I was trying to get someone in the age range and I saw him pop up and I was like, oh, he'd be good. But is it like too meme Like, no, 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 it'd be perfect. I think that I think he Willem would be Defoe. good. He's just he's just good. And then Christian Bale is Piranesi. <laughs> <laughs> and um, God, Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared Leto. <laughs> as Jared Paul Leto Allen. Raphael. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Beer Nessie's just like, let's just well, let's see Paul Allen's best studio. <laughs> <laughs> This is fun. This is so fun. <laughs> no, Ketterly, every time he has to go back in the world, he's like, I need to return some video <laughs> tapes. <laughs> I forgot about all the memes oh from American God, Psycho. That's so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. He described his Armani suit. <laughs> Bruh. Actually, though. I was trying to think. I mean, there are there are also dead bodies. Yeah. And he just calls Paranesi <laughs> and just admits, okay, the the bird box man. The he just starts yeah. going off a list of people that he's killed. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> oh my it's god! Like, I'm kind of a sick man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right, all right. And then Raphael's just like. I was like, okay, do you have a restaurant in here? Do you have a reservation in here that we could go to? She's, yeah, well, she's, she, like, she's the server. She's just like, here's your duck egg. <laughs> I was thinking she would be like the, um, God, what's her name in American Psycho? Oh, uh. The girlfriend. Yeah, well, I forgot her name. <laughs> yeah, anyways. <laughs> anyway, that's about Evelyn. Evelyn, yes. I feel, yeah. She's just like, is there a restaurant? Do you have a reservation here? That's why I came. You know, where's the reservation, Piranesi? Come on. And then he calls and they just laugh at him. <laughs> <laughs> he just uses uh, Ketterly's phone. He's like, and then he doesn't actually know how to use it. He's like, yeah, it's right here. It's on here. It's just like the call to, um, Dor- Dor- what's it called? Dor- Doris? Oh, Dorsha. Do- Dorsha? Is that it? Yeah, Dorsha. Yeah, it's like that call where he <laughs> is just pretending to make the reservation oh, yeah. in front of her. And She's he, like, okay, so excited to go to the restaurant. And they're like, and you, don't, you don't have, the he's like, you don't have a reservation. He's like, oh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he just starts randomly leading her through the halls. Yeah. Oh, my God. Anyways. American Psycho, we will never forget. <laughs> that was traumatizing the book yeah it was very it was very traumatizing <laughs> when i had to read 100 pages the last day it was, right. it was not fun yeah and you were reading at the pool <laughs> you're reading at the pool like trying to get the good vibes in you did i read it at the pool i remember you saying you were at the pool reading yeah it. i did read it you're right you're right i was saying because i also read emma at the pool i just i got it you know what, two opposite books you also. know it's a good beach read what the stranger I could finish that at the beach. Literally. One okay, beach, on one beach session. <laughs> one beach session. Yeah, you're done with it. <laughs> one beach reservation. <laughs> at Dorsia. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Dorsia, not Dorsia. No, oh, no, you're right. Or am I? Wait. No, it's Dorsia. No, we said Dorsia, and then we were so surprised. On the, I'm, I might be getting this wrong, but we were so surprised in the movie when they said Dorsia. No, it was Dorsia. Dorcia, we were surprised by the way they pronounced something. Yeah, it wasn't no, it, it was it was the name of that place. You might be right. I don't know. I, I have I bad memory. I swear it was Dorcia. I don't know. Shoot, let's rewatch the video. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing this. We should probably end it off. I mean, I don't have any. Like, that's all we can do. There's obviously yeah. no adaptation until we make one. So yeah, wet- tune in next week for when we make the whole. Adaptation. So yeah, it's Wes Anderson film. <laughs> we got Daniel Radcliffe as Piranesi. We got Willem Dafoe as Ketterly. We got J.K. Simmons as the Prophet. <laughs> and as Raphael, we got Emily Blunt. <laughs> so all of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all of my decisions. <laughs> oh. No man, I still I still think Peter Capaldi. Capaldi. Wrong. This is where I, this is where I'm debating. <laughs> I think that they, the audience, they should comment down below what you liked. Like, you can pick from either of ours, but overall, like, what adaptation do you want to see more yeah. when we create this? Because your comments decide what we're going to be doing next week um, when we create it full, full um, budget. Adaptation. Yeah, full adaptation, 
Um, biggest budget ever, bigger than um, Infinity War and Endgame combined. Um, Dude, you know what the Lord of the Rings show us. budget was? No. $500 million. More than that. <laughs> Isn't that insane, though? And half of that was just purchasing the rights to Lord of the Rings. That's crazy. Okay, right. that's crazy. Ugh. Imagine how that money could have been spent otherwise. Yeah. Me, as someone that's never seen Lord of the Rings, doesn't faze me. Could have never been created. I'd be living <laughs> that, the same life. That is supplying clean water to one small African country. And we're like, Amazon film. <laughs> <laughs> as someone that's never seen Lord of the Rings, it doesn't bother me because my life is not any different if it was never made. My life be like... That's copyrighted. You're going to have to purchase the rights to that. Right. I mean, so. I got $40 million saved though. So okay. Well, that's all going to our, um, our adaptation. Oh, you're so, right. So, sorry. Yeah. All that's being lost. And you're worried. We better hope that we make this back. So, comment down below which one you prefer so we know we make the right decision. What actors did you like? And, or list your own actors. We can get into contact to all of them. So, let yeah. us know what My you think. My agent will get on it. <laughs> let us know what you think um if you like this uh, like and subscribe also let us know about this kind of style because this is something that i'd be down to do more like maybe once a month every so often yeah something like this so we get to talk about newer books um i had fun so yeah let us know what you guys thought and bye get out of here